Middle Earth, a land of great beauty and greater conflict. From small folk to ancient kingdoms, Middle Earth is the breeding ground for fantastical adventures and larger than life characters. This is the story of Middle Earth. When the world was young, before the first sunshine and moonlight, before the war of wrath between powers of terror and might, a mountain range lay between Eriador and Beleriand. These mountains were called Eridluin, Sindarin for Blue Mountains, and they were one of the oldest inhabited regions in Middle-earth. Before Beleriand was destroyed in the First Age, seven rivers flowed from its western side through the fair land of Assyrian, where the Green Elves came to abide. In the War of Wrath, at the end of the First Age, the mountain chain was broken and divided in two by the Great Gulf of Loom. Mountains were always best loved by the dwarves. Since the First Age of the Sun, they built their houses over, upon, and under them, laboring long in making them grand. This love of stone was a gift given to them by their creator, and the Blue Mountains was one of the first ranges in which they dwelt. The dwarves were not created by Iluvatar, but by one of the Valar. Aule had lordship over all the substances of the world and was a smith as well as a master of all crafts. Aule had a great desire to pass his knowledge on, but he did not know when the firstborn of Iluvatar would appear. He decided to literally take matters into his own hands, so he created the dwarves. Aule made the dwarves strong, stubborn, and long-lived, but not immortal like the elves. They were to be builders and craftsmen like their creator, whom they called Mahal, which meant the maker in their tongue. Iluvatar sternly rebuked Aule for making beans before the coming of his own children, and Aule was remorseful. He was ready to destroy his creations, but Iluvatar pitied the dwarves, allowing them to live and granting them true life. They could not precede his own firstborn, however, so Iluvatar made the dwarves sleep until after the Eldar awoke. There were seven created by Aule, and they were laid to sleep in different parts of Middle-earth. Durin slept north of the Misty Mountains. His kin were called the Longbeards. Two others slept in the Blue Mountains, and their clans were the Firebeards and the Broadbeams. The progenitors of the Ironfists, Stiffbeards, Blacklocks, and Stonefoots slept in the mountains to the east. The dwarves had many beliefs strange to the other folk of Middle-earth. They believed that the Seven Fathers could be reborn amongst their kin and bear their ancient names. Dwarves also kept their own language a secret from other races, but the battle cry of the dwarves, Baruch Kazad, Kazad I may knew, has been heard upon many a battlefield throughout the long years of conflict. At some point in the first age of Middle-earth, two dwarf fathers opened their eyes, gazing in wonder at the starry skies. But it was in the heart of the mountain that they found their place. The two westernmost houses of the dwarves, the Firebeards and Broadbeams, built the great dwarven cities of Nograd and Belagost, and the mountains rang with the hammer strikes and the songs of dwarven hosts. Centuries later, the wrath of the Valar brought forth lightning and thunder, fire and flame, and the world was changed. Beleriand sank beneath the sea, and the mountains were broken, and the great dwarven cities were destroyed. With their cities in ruins, the dwarves fled. Homeless and helpless, the children of Aule migrated east to Moria, which they called Khazad Dûm, where the dwarves of Durin threw a mighty feast. Over the following centuries, they shared their knowledge of the world of old, carving and molding gems of ruby and gold, and the works of the dwarves was wondrous. But in their quest for more ore and gems, they dug too deep, and unknowingly woke a demon of shadow and flame which threatened to destroy them. They fled from Moria in terror, and homeless once more, some dwarves turned toward the Blue Mountains, their home of old, while those of Durin's folk went east and settled in Erebor. Many years later, the Erebor dwarves were once again refugees, and they came to settle with their kin in the Blue Mountains. Their halls had been destroyed by Smaug the Golden. Though they founded a prosperous settlement, the Erebor dwarves eventually returned to their home leaving their halls to the clans of the Blue Mountains. As the Third Age came to an end and the world was left in the hands of men, the dwarves remained in the Blue Mountains. Eventually they diminished, until the only sign of their achievements lay in the stones of the Blue Mountains, a monument to their craft and grandeur. 
Here we leave the riches of the Blue Mountains to the dwarves. Next.